All right, so my particular brakes. I have a hubcap that's held on with a single screw and a couple tabs, or a single tab. The number three Phillips. So, pull that off, pull it out there, and then lower it down. You can see the tab right there. Got my jack under there before I lift the tire. Just like all tires, before you ever loosen lug nuts, you should leave the tire remaining in contact with the ground so that you can loosen the lug nuts without spinning the tire. All right, we've got the wheel off. This is a dual axle trailer. And you can see there's a wire here. It's coming down. That lets you know that this axle has brakes. A lot of trailers have dual axles, but only one axle have brakes. This particular camper, both axles have brakes. Alright, so now we need to take the hub off. Alright, to get this hub off, we're going to start with taking a little rubber bushing out. Basically to keep your grease from going everywhere. So I used a screwdriver with a little small tip. You drive it down in between there. Rotate it as you're doing it a little at a time. Your screwdriver, try to, try to make it come out evenly. As the gap gets bigger, increase the size of your screwdriver. We're going to take it off. Alright, I've taken that stuff off. I'm setting it on a napkin to try to keep all the dirt and dust off of it. The washer that was behind the nut came with it. The grease had it stuck to it. just want to show you that. Now, we can start. We can give that hub a little bit of tug there. Get it come off. As long as our brakes aren't interfering with it, it'll, it should come off. There's another... Uh, there's, a, there's another. There's a bearing here, so that bearing will come out as well. So I'm going to use that hub to push that bearing out so I can grab hold of the bearing. All right, that's the star wheel that we need to adjust. See if I can show you something. So this is the lever that operates the star wheel. So we need to move this lever out of the way and rotate this wheel upward so that's what we need to do because right now what's happening is the drum is hanging on the brake pad the drum is hanging on the brake pad so we need to adjust that how do we adjust that well as you can see got these two little things right here that are access ports from the outside These should come out. Might just take a little effort. All right. I got the port opened. I got my drum pulled back a little bit so that I can show you what's going on in here. So I use my screwdriver and I'll lift that up. Then I have to use my other screwdriver to adjust the wheel. I'm not going to be able to do this while holding this camera, so. So, let 
this is what we were turning just like a regular drum brakes on a car I'll be replacing the brake assembly so I've ordered my Lippert brake assembly this is supposed to be my two left brake assemblies we'll open it up real quick so as the wheel is rotating this way rolling down the road you should pull the brake to the rear so that way okay. which means that is a correct left brake drum and this also is a correct left, left brake drum all right this is what the plug looks like and this is what it looks like when you pull out the cap which is here in my hand and then you pull out the metal connections and there's two of those so the reason I did that is so that I can pull the wire out without having to cut off any extra length so I want to save as much length as I can that's what I'm doing so there you go so for right now, the only two wires I'm pulling out of here are the two that come out from this magnet. Now that I've got my wire loose on the back side, I'm going to take the five mounting nuts off. I use my impact to do it. There we go. Just reached out there, grab it, came right off. All right, here's my replacement unit. Let me show you these. These are the wires I need to connect. I need to pull them back through, don't pinch them. So I need to pull those through. You wanna put this in the same orientation as the original. That's with the arm for the magnet it was up front but to the front side of the camper which is to our left so you want those the same way so slide it on they already come pre-assembled so you don't have to do much uh, here's the hardware that they sent so I get new nuts and new wire splices. So, put the nuts on, get them started by hand while holding the bone between my knees, which makes it, of course, as easy as possible. There you go, that's on. Here's what I'm using. I use Lucas Extra Heavy Duty Grease. It's a high temperature, high speed bearings, regular maintenance. It's made for automotive bearing and chassis lubrication. So I use this a lot. My tractor, my bobcat, my trailer, any other equipment I have. So I want to show you, here's the Zerk fitting. When you grease this, what I'm going to do is right now is I'm going to pump the grease that's in there now out with what I have. And you can see it's coming out right there. See? Alright, so you want to clean everything. Don't forget to get the grease and the bearing out of your hub. There's a bearing right here. Let's see if I can show it to you. Bearing. Yeah. Need to try to get that all that cleaned out. 
All right. Uh, side note, different greases may not mix together very well. So mix two to greases that don't agree with each other. You'll have no grease at all. All right, <clears throat> got the hub on. I packed my bearing full of grease. I'm pushing the bearing in. All right, next is the washer. That's this washer. All right, and the next is the castellated nut. However, do yourself a favor, find out where your hole is in advance. Unlike most times when you use a cotter pin with a castellated nut, the hole is not centered. And it's not centered because the grease fitting in the shaft allowing the grease to travel into the hub is down the center. So it's off to the side. It's a good thing to make note of. it in there tighten that up a little bit this is how we're going to set the the uh, the load on the bearings with the with the nut it's kind of a feel thing so can't really show you because it's a video but you got to kind of tighten it up you'll you want to feel the drag on the hub and come off of it a little bit all right, so we'll do that. All right, so got my socket again. This is a one and seven sixteenth socket. Okay, that's finger tight right there. You need to be gentle with this. Don't get crazy. Right, just doing that and filling my bearings feeling the as the bearings load down it, your hub will start to not turn as easy so I think we're good right there you make sure our hole lines up and uh, hole lines up for the cotter pin and then we'll uh, put the cotter pin in and grease it all right I think you can see there the holes lined up pretty well so, carter pin goes through comes out the other side now take your head push it all the way in all right and bend these around there push them down all right we're gonna put the cap on first without the rubber plug All right, so we're going to put the hub on, the hub cap, whatever you want to call it. All right, I had to set you down. I couldn't get it started evenly. Get it, get it uh, seated all the way in there. Don't leave any gaps. All right, now we're going to grease. Once you got it greased, and it's loaded good, put your cap back on. Just push it in the middle. Pop right in. There we go. All right, we've got a six lug nut hub, and our wheel or tire, well, tire, the rim is a 15 inch rim. So six studs with a 15 inch rim. The torque is somewhere between 120 foot pounds. And that's generally based on the size of your stud along with the number of lugs and your tire size. Here we go. Six lug. It's a little bigger than a half inch it looks like. Just estimating 15 inch rim somewhere between 120 and 140 foot pound so we'll put it up to 120. Alright, I got the lug nuts on. Got my torque wrench. 
set on 120. Okay. Torque wrench. When you use an extension with the torque wrench, you can vary you can vary the torque by letting it tilt or lean on you. Also, if you're using a really high torque and it's enough torque where it can twist this metal, it will change your torque. So, for example, if I'm using this at 40 foot pounds, 40 foot pounds isn't enough to twist this metal. It's not really going to affect my torque. 120 is uh, probably not enough to twist this either, but it's getting closer. So, be careful how you use your torque wrench. I'll show you what I kind of try to show you what I'm talking about. So if you're going off, if if you're letting it flex or turn and twist while you're torquing it, you're changing the you're changing the actual torque felt at the wrench. So you need to hold it out there, keep it steady as you can, keep it rigid, and don't use such a if you're using such a high torque, you need to use a, a more heavy duty device as an extension. So there we go. Got them all torque, torqued them in a cross pattern. Talk to them here, to here, to here, to here, over here, and then back to here. All right. Put the hubcap on and you're done with this one. And then all you got to do is repeat it three more times for this particular trailer. The last thing to do is make your connections. All right. So here's a brand new wire. And it has some conductor showing. We want to cut that off. So we want a nice clean end to the wire. So we'll cut that one. And we'll also cut the other one. The splice that we're using, the same splice like this relies on the insulation being on the wire okay with your new splice you can't see that but this end is solid this end has grease in it and that's a dielectric grease. You want that. Don't don't try to get rid of it. So you're going to slide the, the these wires, this red and black one that's in this one. You're going to slide that those two wires into this. I'm going to pull my wires out of my splice. Clean them up. where they've been spliced before. Cut that off. This one also. And it really doesn't matter which hole you put them in. As long as you put them in all the way. And put in all three wires. Oh, and I can't see what I'm doing because I'm casting a shadow. So there's one. There's two. There's three. One, two, three. In. Now, squeeze it down. Oops, 
squirt it. Pull, pull, pull. Three good splices. There we go. All right, now we're done with this tire. Actually, really done with it. So there you go.